talking about the uh, this wonderful, wonderful Friday weekend. Mm. Well, now I got to go Ah, uh, you know, I had to do a video on Mercury retrograde because, you know, um, it's such a hassle and a pain in the butt uh, when we go through retrogradation periods. And I think we need to know exactly what's going on. We can explain it scientifically, what's going on when Mercury goes retrograde. So there are two interpretations that we have to give you. Giving you the scientific explanation alone is not gonna mean anything, okay? It'll be just another planetary phenomenon that's very well known in the astronomy, in the field of planetary science. Um, there are many forces that intertwine with the planets and all of nature all the time. Most of it, unaware, we're unaware of it. And those energies and forces that we are aware of, like gravity, uh, we take for granted because it doesn't really it doesn't really impact us uh, the way it would an astronaut who has to go into the space station at zero gravity and and understand that if they're up there for too long at zero gravity, it's going to deteriorate their bones when they come back to Earth. So that is a direct effect of gravity when we're not on it and we were built to be on it, uh, and we take for granted because none of us go to space every now and then with our bodies and experience zero gravity. I say that to say that gravity is such a powerful force, but it's so unassuming and many humans are not even aware of it. And in, in some regions, in some parts of this planet, there are still primitive cultures that don't even know what that is. Okay? So gravity is like all the other forces of nature uh, that co-harmonize are deeply impacting when you remove these forces from our day-to-day -day lives. Or something happens that alters these forces every now and then. And every now and then, these alterations in routine, as far as the planet's rotation, the planet's speed, the planet's blah, 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 now becomes significant, right? So uh, two things that I wanted to uh, talk about. Number one is what is actually happening with either the planet Mercury or the planet Earth, or even the sun, or whatever it is. Because we cannot look at the stars and make observations and then hold the observations that we have observed over time as standard and law. You know, our vintage point from Earth looking out is a whole different perspective than if you are outside of Earth looking in. The laws don't apply. The laws only apply when we're on Earth looking at, or, or at least that's the appearance of things. It took me long to get this together because um, there was a lot to do. And you know, uh, science is very difficult to explain, especially if you add mathematics. Um, you no, know, I have to take into account that everybody's level of education is not the same. Uh, and that's no offense to anybody. Uh, but it's good to know, at least for me, that I've been blessed by the creator to give me 
a cognitive understanding of you know, scientific complexities that I can then take it and parcel it in a simplistic way that people can absorb and understand it. Uh, in reality, the more complicated something is, it's really the more simple it is. It just depends on the perspective and the frame of references that you're using, right? With science, there isn't much of a reference, but mathematics. Two plus two will always be four, not five. So that's why science is such a tried and true uh, measurement of reality, because we can duplicate the findings. Uh, oh boy, my door just opened by itself. You're crazy? Hold on one second. The first thing you gotta, uh, that was so weird, how uh, that, you know, that just, or it must have been the nature spirits. I have lots of trees. Uh, the one thing that you need to keep in mind about Mercury retrograde is that we are taught as astrology students that, you know, the planet Mercury is going backwards or moving backwards. That's not true. The planet Mercury doesn't move backwards. Uh, you've heard of uh, Mars retrograde, Saturn retrograde. All the planets can go retrograde, and they do. Right now, Uranus is retrograde. Pluto is retrograde, about to go direct. It did this three times in a year. Uh, Venus went retrograde about three, three years ago, and it was a powerful retrograde. And it conjuncted Pluto, who also was retrograde. So are these planets really moving backwards compared to the Earth? Well, one thing is certain. Every single planet in our solar system has a molecular weight, a critical mass, and a rate of speed. Uh, for example, I can say that the speed of Venus is 0 0.05555. The rate of speed of uh, Mercury is 0 0.22489. And we can continue that with all of the other planets. They do have a constant number that has been determined by planetary scientists and they determine which is the weight, the molecular weight, the mass, the critical mass, the orbital speed, and its rotation, you can, you can, you can create an equation and, and calculate and predict the actual movement of that planet throughout its trajectory around the sun. Because it's the same cycle over and over and over. So you can predict the next orbital flow or speed of any planet once you figure out these um, givens, which becomes part of an equation, a mathematical equation. Okay, that's one phenomenon. But then there's another phenomenon, which is non-scientific based. And this phenomenon has to do with the mundane aspect of Mercury retrograde. What happens on the earth with its inhabitants, nature, no, uh, there's delays, problems with computers, technologies, phone, you know, uh, things don't work and then they come back. Old friends, because Mercury rules, you know, friends, siblings and casual acquaintances, right? Uh, you, you, you will get letters and, and, and emails and, and phone calls that are delayed. You don't get it, you don't hear it, or you get information from someone from your distant past that kind of makes a cycle back to you after a period of being away. It seems that Mercury retrograde brings back old people, old friends, old situations, almost like uh, double checking, cross checking before it moves further along its orbit. This has no scientific explanation. 
Scientists cannot explain it. And of course, because it's outside the field of human development, we don't have any sociologists, social workers, researchers, statisticians, anthropologists that can explain why when this phenomenon occurs three times a year, we have mundane events that occur on the earth that have nothing to do with the mathematical equations and relevancy of Mercury's uh, retrogradation motion. We're talking about science here. It doesn't match what happens mundanely. It's outside the field of science. Luckily though, for you uh, as a shaman, because not so much as an astrologer. As an astrologer, I'll give you the math and the science and the logic. But as an astrologer, I can give you why friends come back after a while. How does that connect to that? Why this doesn't work? Why that doesn't work? You know, uh, that's mundane and probably a little esoteric. And scientists has no answer and neither does um, social scientists. But the ones that do have the answer are shamans. So you luckily, not only am I an astrologer, but I'm also a shaman. So, and what, what did I say shaman means? It means to know. We know. Uh, we know the phenomenology because we link it to the mythology of the gods. You know, the archons who've created us, the greater and the lesser Elohim. Okay, so now let's explain Mercury retrograde. It's really, really, really very simple. Okie dokie. Now here, what you see here, what we see here is this is the sun. And you see that the sun is, that is very, very heavy and is making a bent into the fabric of space time. This is a, uh, it, it looks like a net. And this is the fabric of space time. See, all the planets and the sun, they sit on a fabric. That's why the planets don't free fall in space. They're sitting in something. So just to let you know how deep this illusion goes, okay? Here, does the, here we got the planet Mars. And here we got the planet Mercury. And then over here, we got the planet Earth. Now, each planet, including our Earth, has its own rate of speed, motion, critical mass, and molecular weight. This is why here we have the biggest dip into the fabric of space time. Uh, a, a better illustration would be like this. Okay. And you know, and the Bible talks about this in the book of Matthew, the kingdom of heaven is like a net. And it, and it says the word net. What do you think Jesus meant by a net? He was talking about the fabric of space time. Okay, see? So the, the sun is sitting in a fabric of, uh, that, that bends. It bends, it moves, it just doesn't sit there. And each planet, according to its weight, creates a dip into the fabric of space time. This is the concept that we call gravity, right? So on top of that though, each planet has its own orbital speed and path, okay? Uh, it's not uniform and I will explain by illustrating with a particular light that I got here. The flashlight. Okay. 
line. Here we go. This is the orbital path of Mars around the sun, behind the sun. Notice, notice that this is a different This is different, this loop for Mars. But then you got Mercury. Mercury has a wider orbit. And then you see the loop, it goes up. It goes loop, it goes up, around, around, loop, it goes up, around. Here we have Mars, it does a loop, it goes back, see? loop, then we got the Earth. And the Earth has an orbital path as well. So it goes like this. This right here is a big loop. Then we have another one, loop. And then another one, loop. And it disappears behind the sun. This loop makes the planet move faster. It's like a a roll band, right? And you ricochet, see? You ricochet, whoop, right? So each orbital speed, depending on its orbit, now the Mars has a medium loop. Mars goes retrograde, but, and Mars speeds up too. They all do. They all do from time to time, especially when they go through this loop, right? The Earth has three loops because it, it, it catches speed, right? And then it slows down, then it catches speed again, because it's going through the loop. And then it catches speed, then it goes in another loop. That loop, that loop causes the Earth or, or any planet to move a little faster than its normal rate of motion across or around the sun, because each planet has a different orbital equation, okay? Some are go like this, some go like this, some go like this, some go like this, some take forever to make a loop, like Pluto, 138 years, Neptune, 176 years, Uranus, 84 years, you know? Venus, years. All the planets have their own rate of motion and speed and gravity and critical mass and specific gravity. And according to that critical mass in space and molecular weight will determine the bent in space time that the planet asserts. And also the heavier the planet is, the slower the loop. The lighter and smaller the planet is, the faster the loop, okay? Uh, the Earth has a, an average speed, not too fast, not too slow. But when it goes to the, its looping, in three portions of its path, it goes faster than the other. And when that happens, it makes the other planets appear like they're going backwards. These planets are not going backwards. The Earth is speeding, and it's giving the illusion from the vintage point of Earth that the planets are moving backwards. That's the phenomenology behind the retrograde. Okay? The looping. It, that's when we when we have a retrograde like right now. Mercury went retrograde on the twenty first, I believe, and it ends on the fourteenth of May. So between this time, the Earth is moving fast. Its orbital feet is fast because it's looping. Okay, when this occurs, something happens. Now that, that now that was a simple explanation. It can get a lot more complicated. But that's a simple explanation, okay? And scientists will agree, and the mathematics supports. But the mystery is when we go to this diagram. In this diagram, this is actually what's happening. This is Mercury. The planet Mercury. The planet Mercury sends out radio waves and transmissions. Ooh, ooh. The different colors and the different lengths of these colors 
represent different aspects of, of the electrical magnetic energy the rules or electronics and all things technologically okay and as you can see it encompasses the entire earth the, the earth's magnetic grid is filled with this mercurial transmission right engulfing the entire earth feeding the earth of this energy that that's that why we have uh radios working computers electronics you know when mercury goes retrograde because the speed is because the planet earth is going faster moving faster than the planet mercury this occurs the nice p wave and t wave alpha waves that are uniform becomes broken up because the earth is moving at a counterclockwise direction in addition to moving forward that's not the same thing with mercury so the energies clash and the earth, the earth electromagnetic grid is not filled the energies break up like sickle cell anemia they break apart and it doesn't fill the planet with this energy. So now we have computers not working, telephones not working, the internet is off, we're offline, the car's not working, the radio, you know, because Mercury rules these transmissions. So, so, so here we have uh, the planet going direct and everything is moving in synchronicity and in harmony. The Earth is being fed of this energy. When it goes retrograde, it is impeded. The Earth's speed is too fast, and the energy transmission of the planet Mercury uh, breaks apart. And therefore, we don't have the same level of functioning that we have here. Okay? Uh, you have old friends that come back to visit you. Uh, you have to, we don't understand this. This we don't understand, the mundane aspect of it. But if we choose another form of reference, then we can connect it. It's never going to be validated. But culturally, Socially, we see a replica of this by the mythology of the gods. They also go backwards, they go backwards and cross check. This has to be collaborated below, as above, so below. So, this is the breakup of the energy, and therefore, the earth doesn't get the transmission that it's supposed to get. It's that simple, okay. guys. Thank you so much. Please donate. Please give. Well, I need more art supplies, more crayons, more of this. This is a channel, help support it. And I, will, I have a couple of more uh, illustrations and downloads for you as far as manifesting. You want something, you give it done, it becomes real. It sounds very simple, but there's a lot involved in it. And, and I'm going to show you that next uh, the difference between concrete thought and abstract thought, and how to dominate the two so that you can manifest anything you want not a distortion of what you want but exactly what you want but that requires mental discipline and certain meditation exercises if you subscribe to my patreon channel i give you these exercises i don't do it on youtube openly so that the secret societies don't get a heart attack right all right guys thank you so much uh please donate 347-485-6258 zelly all cash up Fernando F E R and A number five. So you can always call for me. I hope this uh was entertaining and simple. Bye.